A Formula One car without rules. How fast would it be? By how much would it beat nowadays cars? Yeah, because maybe you don't know, but the Formula One cars you see on televisions could go much, much faster if there weren't rules. So I've always wondered, what if we get rid of those rules? How fast would that car be? Well, in this video, I'm about to answer this question. First of all, we all agree that Formula One cars are the fastest cars on the planet, right? And that's sure for one simple reason. The FIA makes the Formula One rules to make sure that those cars are the fastest on Earth. And this is the reason why it's called Formula One, because that technical regulation is the formula to make the cars number one on the planet. Did you know that? But that performance they reach is not the technological limit. It is just the regulation limit, because those cars could go much faster. They are literally choked by regulation. Okay, but why? Well, because if limits were not put, the manufacturers would build spaceships that would cost billions of dollars. And that would not just kill the sport, it would probably also kill the drivers. So the FIA with the Formula One regulations allows them to be the fastest cars in the world, but without exaggeration. Okay, but what do we mean with fastest cars in the world? Because actually there are road cars which are faster than the Formula One cars, if we think about the top speed. Well, obviously with fastest we don't mean top speed, but we mean lap time. The Formula One cars, that is how fast you can make a lap of the track. And that does not mean top speed, because in order to make a quick lap, the car needs to be lightweight, agile, powerful. So in the world, there are no Formula 2, IndyCar, Super Formula, prototypes or Formula E that can go faster than a Formula 1 car. So what happens if we take the Formula 1 cars and remove all the limits? Well, I don't know if you know that, but somebody actually did that on the Spa-Francorchamps circuit. But actually, they didn't do it on a Formula 1 car. So April 2018, at the end of the previous year, Porsche withdrew from the World Endurance Championship. So to celebrate the success of the LMP1 car, the Porsche 919, they decided to organize a big promotional tour. And what did they do? They took that car, the 919 Evo, took away all the limitations imposed by the regulation and ran it all around the tracks to try and beat all the records. And what happened in Spa-Francorchamps? It happened that that car set a monstrous lap time, 141.77, which was so fast that it actually beat the Formula One pole by 8 tenths of a second. Holy crap! So, now Formula One cars are not the fastest cars on the planet anymore? Well, actually, they still were, because that 919 Porsche car was not legal. <laughs> so any illegal Formula 1 car would beat that lap time. But anyway, that scandal was short-lived, because a few weeks later, Sebastian Vettel managed to beat that time during the Q2 of the Belgian Grand Prix, setting 141.508, this time with a regular car. Then the record was lower again in 2020, with the 41.242 of Lewis Hamilton. However, let's go back to the Porsche 919 Evo. Because why do we care so much about that record? Because that record makes us realize how faster would be a race car without limitations. And I mean any race car. My Euro NASCAR, the Legend car, the GT3, every car would be much faster without rules. And do you know what was the qualifying lifetime of the Porsche 919? It was a 153.7. That means that the same car without limitations was 12 seconds per lap faster. It gained the 10% of the lap time. That's crazy if you consider that from the first to the last on a Formula One qualifying, there is less than 2%. So what if we did the same on a Formula One car? Would it be able to run 130 on Spa? And what would this car look like? Well, we can try to think about it, starting from the engine. How can we make a Formula One engine more powerful? Now, you already know that Formula One engines are hybrid. So we have the internal combustion engine and the electric engine. But we also know that the electric engines are more powerful than the combustion ones. So what if we remove the hybrid engine and just put an electric one? Yeah, that would sound really bad. And luckily that wouldn't work. Because for example, if we take the Remak Nivera, which has a total amount of 1914 horsepower, well, only the batteries weigh 700 kilos on that car. That means that just the batteries weigh as much as a whole Formula One car. So, no electric engine. Okay, so we can take the hybrid Formula One engine and put a more powerful MGK, which is the electric engine. Well, it's not that simple, because basically there is no room to put a bigger engine. 
So, what can we do to make the Formula 1 engine more powerful? Well, actually it's simple. We can burn more fuel. This graph has been generated using the calculations of a Formula 1 engine model. And in green, you can see the current power curve of the nowadays Formula 1 V6 engines. Talking about just the combustion engine. We have a peak of 882 horsepower at 12,500 RPMs. But what about the curve in red? <laughs> That curve is obtained without the consumption limits imposed by the regulations. Yeah, because nowadays regulations impose a very lean carburation with super little gasoline. Instead, we want to use the typical mixtures of a Formula 1 from 2000 era. They were nuclear bombs. So look at this. With those mixtures, that will reach 1800 horsepower. <laughs> that combined with the electric motor would reach 1,967 horsepower. That engine would take twice as much strain as it does today. It would take pressures four times greater than the Schumacher era V10s. This engine, I don't know how many cars would last before braking, but that's nothing crazy because in the 80s, the Formula One cars were actually using qualifying engines. Those were 1400 horsepower engines made just for qualifying that after a few laps would usually explode. So why don't we do that? However, this is really too much. Let's do something less. We can take nowadays engines, squeeze the turbo a little bit, change carburations, and safely touch 1250 horsepower combined. That would be a very powerful engine. But how would that impact on the lap time? Well, it is estimated on SPA that for every 10 horsepower, you gain an extra 2.5 tenths of a second. That means that this engine would make the car 6.2 seconds per lap faster, just with the engine alone. And that is just the beginning, because now we're about to change the chassis. So the first idea could be to push the aerodynamic to the maximum. And we can start with the fastest Formula 1 cars ever, the 2020 cars. We want more aero load. How do we do that? We can put bigger wings. Yeah, that will work on the corners, but that will put too much drag and the car will be slow on the straight. Okay, so we could give it more ground effect. Yeah, but can you imagine the porpoising? <laughs> I mean, the drivers would vomit in the helmet. So we need a different solution. We need something that glues the car to the ground not only in fast corners, but also in the slow corners. But does such a thing exist? Well, yes. And you know what? Some crazy guy invented it in 1978 with the Brabham BT46B. Guys, I swear you, these pictures are not AI generated. They are 100% real. The idea was really simple. They took a fan, they connected to the motor shaft, and they just made it spin. This fan sucked the air from under the car creating a monster ground effect that glued the car to the ground. Exactly like a vacuum cleaner. But more importantly, it creates the ground effect even at low speeds. That was a huge advantage in 1978. So big that that car won the first race. And you know what? After that race, that system was banned. Ugh. Yeah, it was really too much. However, what we wanna know is that this system exists and works. And that car was not the only one, because there was also the McMurtry Sperling, which is that sort of bad mobile car, that set the record for Goodwood Hill Climbing in 2022. Very similar basic concept. Okay, what else can we do? Well, we can change tires. Something like qualifying tires. And again, this is not crazy, because for many years, in Formula 1, they used the qualifying tires. In the 80s, they were the norm. But talking about nowadays, for example, if we take Spa, this year Pirelli carried the C1, C2 and C3 compound. The soft tires were the C3. But what we want to know is that Pirelli also makes the C4 and C5, which are even softer. In a track like Spa, they will destroy after a few laps. But if we want to make one lap, that's okay. However, Pirelli could also design a special tire for that record. Why not? But there's something more we can do we can work on the electronics. ABS, traction control, torque vectoring, all forbidden in nowadays Formula One. They should be calibrated properly, but you know, there are the best engineers in the world that can do it. But then we can do another crazy thing, the active suspensions. And all these things I'm saying are not sci-fi, they actually really existed in Formula One. The Williams FW14B, the queen of cars with active suspensions. 
To be more precise, the FW15 was the evolution that raised in 1993 and was even better. But what's the advantage of active suspensions? Well, the advantage is that although the car is moving for braking, cornering, accelerating, the suspensions always keep the car in the perfect setup, making the aerodynamics work perfectly. And how much is this advantage? Well, that wheelers with active suspensions in 1992 was 2.5 seconds faster than the first of the opponent. And that opponent was Michael Schumacher. So let's say that between tires, electronics, suspensions, we can gain three seconds per lap. If we consider the chassis and the fan, we can get three more seconds. So it's easy to imagine that by just making these changes, a Formula 1 car could easily drive in 130 in Spa. Okay, wow. But I want to do something more. What if instead of taking a Formula 1 car, and upgrading it. Why don't we design a new race car from scratch, without limitation, just to make it the fastest car on earth? Well, somebody actually has done it. I'm talking about one of the greatest mine in motorsport history. I'm talking about Adrian Newey with the Red Bull X 2010. This car is the highest performing car in the world. The fastest ever imagined. Too bad it currently exists only as a dummy in a museum. Yeah and it can only be driven on a simulator. They never built it. It was designed by Adrian Yu for Gran Turismo 5, and the first virtual shakedown was done by Sebastian Vettel. And what does this car look like? Engine, 3000 twin turbo V6 with 1479 horsepower. <laughs> gearbox, seven speed Formula One like gearbox, nothing special. Suspension, push rod front and rear, fully active, like the 1992 Williams. Weight, 545 kilograms. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 250 kilos less than nowadays Formula One. <laughs> it weights like my legend car. <laughs> but listen to this, the good stuff is yet to come. Aerodynamics, all, but really all, the Red Bull X 2010 car is designed to be an aerodynamic masterpiece. The car is designed with only one goal, to pierce the air and cling to the asphalt. We have aero-style closed cockpit, covered wheels and fairings, all details that serve to reduce the drag. Okay, but we want the car to make the corner, so where is the downforce? We use a double diffuser for high speeds and a fan connected to the engine to create downforce at low speeds. Exactly like the Brabham, the same. Wow, but how fast would it be compared to a Formula 1 car? Well, we cannot drive it in the real world, but we can drive it on the simulator. Okay, first of all, we'll drive a Formula One. I am with Assetto Corsa. This is the Ferrari SF70H. <laughs> it's like two years I don't drive a Formula One on the simulator. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's fast. Guys, I'm used to the GT3 cars. <laughs> and whoa. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I don't want to spend two months trying to do the best possible lap, especially with that car where I have to learn how to manage the... So I searched on YouTube and I saw that this guy did 141.7, which makes sense. Now, let's pick up the Red Bull 2020. But be careful, with this mod there are two versions, 600 horsepower, that's not what we want, and 1500 horsepower. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's insane. Look at the cockpit, how it closes. Whoa! Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> That's too fast. 2.7 G's just for the acceleration. Whoa! 400 kilometers an hour, the Rouge. Flat out. Oh my god! Wait, 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 wait! Whoa, what is that? Look at Puan! No way! No way! I broke at 400 kilometers an hour! Later than a Formula 1 car! And I still had more! I can't make it! <laughs> That's too much! So, same stuff. Let's see on YouTube what's the fastest lap time. What? 
This guy did 123.6. Average speed 300 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is way faster than 130. And in another simulation that I did, I almost reached 8 Gs. Guys, this is insane. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that was much more than 10%. Okay, but the Red Bull X 2020 is not a Formula 1 car. Not only, especially because it has covered wheels. And the problem is that that car is estimated to hit a G of lateral acceleration. Drivers might not survive driving. So we reach the point where the limits are not anymore technological. They are human. So maybe we are exaggerating. Maybe that's too much. So the best thing would be to take an existing Formula 1 car and just unlock it, like Porsche did with 919 Evo. However, to finish this video, I invite you to a reflection. Think about how fast Formula 1 cars are nowadays. Despite having to consume little fuel, use limited aerodynamics, without fans or other devices, yet, with all these limitations, they are still insanely fast. And this is the technological challenge of the Formula 1 engineers. It's not to create extreme cars, but rather is to be able to squeeze every drop of a performance while respecting the regulations. Coming up with ingenious solutions, finding tenth after tenth, to go faster when the rules are trying to make you slower. Would the absolute freedom be appealing? But more importantly, who would ever be able to drive a car like this? <laughs>